The middle ones, quite a lot, eh? 6.2. They grow very fast, this monodiamond tree. And the old growth, less. So yeah, carbon recovers over time, eh? but the rate of accumulation is not the same. It changes. It kind of grows slow, a little bit faster, and then it kind of flattens. <coughs> you know, the rate kind of flattens. And I want to show you this figure because it took me a long time to produce it. Eh? Let me see if you can understand it. My professor was super proud about it, but I think nobody understands. But anyway, let me try. So, so the square are the plots in 1983 and the rounds is 2013 when I measured them. And the idea is that one plot over time moved in some direction. This axis is the biomass, so this plot increased in biomass over time, a little bit there, eh? from, I don't know, 20 to 30 maybe. Eh? But this axis is number of stems. So this is a colonizing forest just near the savanna. So actually over time it increased. A lot, a lot of trees happened to grow there, but the biomass was small because more than many, many trees, but a few of them. But for this type of forest colonizing, most of them did the same thing. We have them in this side. And I think what's interesting is number two. We look at number two, the ones that are already a bit bigger. And these, they barely increase in any stems. They mostly move in this direction. Trees, no matter how many they had, they went right. They all went very fat. So we can see the dynamics in the two types of forests were different. Then we look at the Marantase, and this is a mess. We see some going up, some going left, some going right. What happens? This is, we're starting to get to what we call an old growth forest. But as you might hear, have heard, old growth forest, or what before was called primary forest, is not static. It's also changing. One big tree falls, it kills a lot of small trees. Then we lose biomass. That's what happened here. The numbers didn't change a lot, but this big tree fall, died, and we lost a lot of biomass, so we went left. These other place, no. The trees were happy doing and growing. So it depends. So we get to this point. That's why in the other figure, we only got on a mean of 1.1, because some trees are growing, some trees are dying. Yes? So the question is, what happened to the savanna? Because in the figure, savanna is not there. Any ideas? Colonized. What happened to a savanna if you don't stop fire? It doesn't change. Because trees cannot grow, so they cannot accumulate biomass. So actually in 20 years, no tree became, I only measured trees that were above 10 centimeters. Eh? So there were some that were eight and a half. But during these 20 years, there was no tree that made it to 10. So the idea is that it's, it, it's just to show you that it's really hard in the beginning of this succession. Fire has a huge role to play. So if you don't stop fire, it's very hard for these trees to grow, to establish themselves, to survive, and to grow to a certain size that are matter for carbon. And the other one I wanted to show here is that savanna also has the lowest. This is what I think is a more useful way to put it. So this is zero, and then we go to 30 centimeters deep in the soil. Eh? This would be the old growth forest, a lot of carbon, 1.8%, and then savanna has about 1%. And then as you go deeper, you have less carbon. That's what I said. Eh? So savanna has less as well because of this fire. The little organic matter that is out there, fire. <laughs> go straight to the atmosphere so it cannot accumulate in the soil. So um, I just wanted to stop here to reflect for a second eh? because I've shown you these studies that go from like 50 years, 75 years, the one I show you from Gabon, 20 years, and we can see the change. But I think it's good to stop and think that what we see now it's not what was there before always. It's a bit what I show you the first slide in the morning about CO2 in the atmosphere. The amount that we have now is a lot different from what it was there before in history. So I think as an ecologist, sometimes we, we focus on what's happened now or recent instead of thinking that the history of our planet has always been dynamic. And because I work on forest, I wanted to show you one more slide on forest. So what happened to the rainforest in Africa over time is that they actually changed a lot. So during the last glacial maxim, maximum, and Erin would tell us better when was that because I never remember. The point is, 
six, how much? 26,000 26, years ago, which seems a lot to be honest. So the forest, the gray is the rainforest more or less in Africa now, and the dark color, either this color of gray or this gray, was how we estimate that the rainforest of Africa was before. And what can we see? There was more or less. There was a lot less than now, isn't it? And it is because during this time, a huge part of the forest, like in Ivory Coast and Ghana, southern Cameroon, northern Gabon, northern DR, I mean Congo Brazza and DRC, the forest contracted and became savanna. So even when we think about forest dynamics, we look at forest dynamics now, but the idea is that Actually, the history of our vegetation, even of our rainforest, has changed over time. And just as a hint, because me, I'm very interested in tropical forests, is that one of the things that are special about tropical forests in Africa is that they're very, they're much less diverse than the Amazon. So they have more carbon, yes, per unit area, but they're less diverse. And it's actually, we think, is related to this. The fact that, as you, I said, that African rainforests are drier, it meant that during the changes that has been in history of our planet, they contracted and expanded and contracted and expanded. So every time they contracted, a few species disappeared on the way. So that made over, over, over time, and I cannot give you the number, maybe Eric can, to make that our forests in Africa are less diverse. I mean, it's just to give you a little hint, eh, because I, I really think it's fascinating how we, I mean, I do forest monitoring, but sometimes we forget to think that actually things have always been changing. The problem is that now they're ch changing so fast that our planet cannot adapt to it or ourselves. And another... Um, on the, the one before? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes, why the rainforest was struck and uh -huh. the savanna. We know one of the characteristics of the tropical forest is they lie up along the equator line and they receive certain rainfall. Certain rainfall. Mm -hmm. So my question, and in along the savannah is where you have less rain. Mm -hmm. So my question is, by that time, did the rain like stop or what happened? Or the equator shifted? No, no. I think it's a very good question. Yeah. We are not 100% sure, eh? And we, these things are estimated by using pollen in the core in the lake so of course we don't have from everywhere that's why there's dif these huge differences in the central Congo we don't have a lot of course from there but I think it's, it's what you said is related to changes in rainfall so sometimes it's not just how much you receive but how it is distributed for for tropical forests they're used to to a lot of rain along the year yes. so even a small change in like one month becomes drier many species would not be able to survive. And that's something that we need to remember for tropical forests. They used to very stable conditions. Day and night temperature barely changes. Humidity barely changes across the year. So even a subtle change can make a big difference. So the idea is that, yeah, the rainfall changed, especially here, and that's why it became drier. Okay, can you also explain why they are less diverse compared to Amazon? Mm -hmm. So it's related to the same thing. So when you have a big patch of forest, eh, we'll try to keep it very simple. You have 10 species living there, like the Amazon, eh? this is an example. Now the forest is divided in two. Like we see here, eh? the Congo Basin, the part of Gabon, north and south, was separated from the DRC. So maybe these, these 10 species we have, now there's some, there's not ten, it's divided, so in your patch you have 10, but maybe the genetic variation of, for you, because your forest is so small, is not enough. You get a funny mutation or something and you disappear. So, over time, because of this fragmentation, more species disappeared. We want to think that it, before they were also very diverse, eh? but just that because of these contractions, the, the, um, it was more challenging for them, so a lot more were left through the years that may disappeared. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, just to point out again on this one, eh, so if you relate what we call the forest refugia, these places that remain tropical forests before, nowadays 
they're still the most diverse. So that's one of the theories for the East African mountains of Tanzania. That's why they have so, sorry, it's not in this map, it would be somewhere here. That's why they have so much endemism, because at some point they were connected to the Congo forest, yes. but then they separated. Speci so the specific, yeah, this speci speciation took place there, so. So the other thing that I want you to think about is not just that climate has changed and that had an effect on our forest and in our vegetation. I think it's also very important to think that in Africa especially, it was not empty. People were living there forever and they had different ways of using the landscape. So this is a paper that came out recently also. If you are interested, I can share it with you. And it showed that this, so I don't have the line, sorry, it would be Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi and Uganda. So it showed the types of people that were living there before. So most of Kenya was occupied by pastoralists. So okay, in the already dry areas, they might not need to use fire, but in slightly more wet areas, if they might want to use fire to promote fresh gra gro grass growth and then make use of the vegetation for the cows or goats or whatever they have. So the idea is that humans also had an effect, this kind of this feedback between our natural, or what we think is natural vegetation historically and what we have out there. And I think, I mean, I think it's a really nice overview because we can see which types of people were living there. Some were using irrigation, so we're using just like when the flooding and taking advantage of the flooding to cultivate. Some were mixed farming. This, I think it just makes us think that what we think, and I'm not even going to discuss this, is what we think is a primary forest might not be primary completely, humans might have been there for a very, very long time, just managing in a different way. Okay, they didn't deforest it completely, but maybe they were using some trees or some species. And there's a nice paper from the Amazon that actually I didn't, I don't think I put it, no. So there's a nice paper in the Amazon that shows that in the southern part of the Amazon, the trees that have fruits that are edible are more and more abundant. And they think it's related to the fact that the pre-Columbian communities living there were dispersing it. It's not that they plant them, but as they eat them and go around hunting, they disperse the seeds when they make their little poo, and they actually that's why they became more abundant. So I think it's good to think that what we see now is not just an effect of past climate, it's also an effect of the humans that were there before. <laughs>